Over the years, I've had multiple conversations with many industry professionals who can't seem to get a grasp on the difference between a Super 35 and a full frame sensor in the modern times. So today, we're gonna to be explaining that. A lot of people reference 35 millimeter film and other film stocks and sizes to explain sensor size, but for this explanation, we're just gonna set that all aside into its own category and just explain the most common digital sensors you're gonna see today in everyday cameras. The biggest reason that people get these two confused is because a lot of people refer to full frame sensors as full frame super 35 as one term. This causes people to get confused between a super 35 sensor, which is slightly smaller, and a full frame super 35 sensor, which has the word super 35 in the name of the full frame super 35 sensor, which I think is where the confusion gets drawn. To help you understand, here's a brief visualization of each common sensor size we see today on digital cameras. Now we're starting off with micro four thirds, and as you can see, this is much more punched in on my face. Um, the sensor size is a lot smaller, which causes the image to be appear way more zoomed in than other larger sensor sizes. Micro Four Thirds sensors are often said to have around a two times crop when compared to full frame sensors. Next up on the list, we have APS-C and Super 35 sensors. They generally have around a 1.5 times crop when compared to full frame, so you do get a little more field of view than Micro Four Thirds sensors, and you also get a little bit shallower of a depth of field. Now this is just Super 35, it's not full frame Super 35, so don't get those too confused. This is a super common sensor on a lot of digital cinema cameras. Um, you'll see it in things like the Ari Alexa Mini, a lot of other cinema cameras, Red Komodo, I could list a billion of them. Okay, maybe not a billion, but there's a lot of cinema cameras that use this form factor. This is very popular in Hollywood movies. Um, in addition to the large format, which we'll talk about later, those are the two most common formats these days that you see in movies when you go to the theater. And finally, we have full frame sensors, which is what I compared everything to on this list. Now, full frame sensors are gonna give you that bigger field of view and also help with that shallower depth of field, which makes your movie look more cinematic. These are seen on common DSLR cameras like the Sony A7 series, A7S III, A7R III, and so on, as well as the Canon R series, the R5, R6, EOS R, all of those cameras have full frame sensors. Now there are sensors beyond the full frame size, such as the LF sensor from Ari, which sits on the Ari Alexa Mini LF. They also have the Ari Alexa 65, which has an even bigger sensor for that massive full frame look, super wide field of view, but super shallow depth of field. And with RED cameras, you have the 8K VistaVision sensor, which is also bigger than full frame. Once again, wider field of view, shallower depth of field, but those are much more specialty. You need special lenses for them that can deal with that a sensor that big. But they're super cool, they just provide a totally different look and feel to the movie, so if that's what you're going for, pick one of those. Anyways, hopefully this cleared it up for some of you guys. Just a quick video explaining sensor size. Super simple stuff, but some people get it confused again, like I said, because of the full frame Super 35 versus just Super 35 millimeter sensors. Leave a comment down below if you learned something today, or if you have any questions about sensor sizes, I can help you out in the comments below. Also leave a like if you did enjoy this video, and be sure to subscribe. It's free. If you like filmmaking videos, it doesn't hurt. Anyways, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in the next video.